Hello and welcome to a hair for millinery video. My name is Ilona, I'm a milliner based in London and today I'm going to show you how I do my hair to go with hats. I've had a few people ask me how I do my hair and let me preface this video by saying that my methods might seem a little bit unorthodox. But I have been following this routine for six years now and my hair is the healthiest it's ever been. So grab your curlers and hairbrush and let's get started. First off, let's talk hair types. My hair type is 1B, meaning that naturally it is thin, mostly straight, with a slight curl at the ends as long as there's nothing to weigh it down. This is how my hair looks without a special haircut. On the left, it is in its natural state, and on the right, it has been curled. If you have a different hair type to me, but would still like to try my method, I'd love to hear about how it worked for you in the comments below. Now it's time to let you in on my first secret, the midi haircut. On the left is what my midi haircut looks like on my hair without any styling. My hairdresser Cormac, whose details you'll find in the description box, describes this cut as having a deep U-shape starting at the nose with blunt layers following the curvature of the head. Here is a diagram of a vintage midi haircut. You can take this to your hairdresser and ask for the same thing. Now that you've cut your hair, it's time to wash it. This is secret number two. Don't use shampoo. I have found that shampoo weighs down and softens my hair too much for it to hold a curl. So instead of shampoo, we're going to use baking soda. That's right, good old bicarbonate of soda, also known as NaHCO3. You'll need to dissolve one tablespoon of baking soda in one mug of warm water before getting into your bath or shower. Once your hair is fully wet, pour the contents of the mug over your head and massage it in just like normal shampoo. Rinse it off with clean water and you're ready for the next step, the apple cider vinegar rinse. Sodium bicarbonate is alkaline and your skin surface is slightly acidic, so we need to do a cider vinegar rinse to restore some acidity. Don't overdo this, as a too acidic cider vinegar rinse can also irritate your scalp rather than restore it. I use one teaspoon of cider vinegar to 500 milliliters of cold water. The cold water is to prevent any frizz. You'll have to experiment and see how your scalp responds to varying amounts of cider vinegar to cold water. Once you've poured this over your head, there's no need to rinse it off. Just step out of the shower and dry yourself down as normal. Before we move on to the hair styling, let's troubleshoot. Sometimes I get a dry flaky scalp as a reaction to hairspray. Whenever this happens, I wash my hair using sulfur soap, and this seems to work for me. I should also say that I wash my hair at most twice a week. Now that your hair is nice and clean, let's style it. To start, define your part. I'm parting my hair at my right eyebrow arch, but you could do it on the left or even at the center. Now, from the top of your head, part it downwards and sideways to the back of your ears. I'm pinning this section up using some clips. Divide your larger section in half. For me, this is on my left. Pin up the section of hair right above the ear, but leave the central section. We're about to put in our first rollers. Take this center front section and divide it in two. Starting with the section further back, I'm going to comb it through to make sure that it is not tangled before rolling it up. I've made sure to pull this hair directly up from my head. The angle at which you do this will determine how much volume your roots will have. Prepare your first sponge roller and place it not quite at the tips of the hair. This is really important as you want to give yourself space to tuck the ends of the hair into it. Roll the tips of the hair around the roller and then roll the roller down, tucking in any end bits that are still poking out. Secure the roller in place. If you've got enough tension in your roll, it shouldn't move, but if it is a little bit loose, you could undo it and try again. Or you could pin it in place using a bobby pin. For the very front section, I'm doing exactly the same thing. Try not to wrap the hair too tightly around the sponge roller. If you squish the foam, you will get a tighter and ununiform curl. Next is my left section, which I'm dividing further into two sections. This time, the roller goes in pointing outwards to the side.
Repeat this on the right. Instead of fiddling with the clips to hold my sections, I hold the hair with my teeth. It's not glamorous, but it is practical. Don't forget to tuck the ends in. I'm using my thumbs to smooth them down as I roll. I took so long rolling the front and the sides that the back is a little too dry for my liking. I'm spraying it with some plain cold water from a spraying bottle to remedy this. Section the back into three sections. The middle section should be the same width as your centre front section. I'm pinning up the side back sections to keep them out of the way. Put some rollers in down the centre back. I ended up with three this time. Sometimes I end up with four. It really doesn't matter as long as your sections aren't too big or too small. The more you do this, the more you'll get a feel for what works well for you and your hair. For the side back sections, I'm going to divide them into more sections and put the roller in pointing outwards. Meaning that I'm not aiming to align it with the centre back rollers or with the side front rollers, but somewhere in between. This time I've ended up with two sections, but once again it doesn't matter. You might end up with one, or even three. Sometimes, the clasp of the roller falls out of the central pin. I'm surprised this happened only once during this hair set. This is okay though, they aren't bad rollers, it's just that the plastic is flimsy. I'll pop the clasp back into the pin later. Here's the finished roller set. All the hair ends look tucked in and my sectioning looks okay. I'm going to pop a hair net over my rollers to keep everything in place. I'm also going to tie a triangular scarf over it so that I look presentable. As for how long to keep the rollers in, I'm going to keep mine in for at least 7 hours. So I'm going to go to sleep now and will uncurl them the next day. Seven hours later. It's the next day and my hair is dry. As you can see, some of the rollers have slightly fallen out, but because I had the hair net on, I'm confident that the curls will have formed just fine. I'm going to unroll all the rollers except for the two in the centre front. I'm using a nylon bristle hairbrush to help smooth out the curls. Brushing helps to homogenise the curls and make sure that they are flicking in the same direction. Lastly, I'm going to unroll and brush the two centre front curls. This time, I'm brushing them to the side. You could also brush them straight back if you wanted to. There's no such thing as too much brushing, so I'm going to continue until I'm happy with the shape. And here's the finished hairstyle. What do you think? Will you give this washing and curling method a go? Let me know in the comments below. If your hair set didn't quite work, you can just hide that by putting your hair up in a bun. First, Comb the hair back towards the nape of the neck. Insert some bobby pins vertically to hold the combed hair in place. Get your hair rat ready. I've linked to my favourite sized hair rats in the description box below. They do come attached to a comb, which I prefer to steam off so that it doesn't get in the way. Place the hair rat over the hair at the nape of the neck and roll the hair up over it. 
Find your V-shaped bobby pin. Catch the hair rat in it and insert it under the bump. Do the same on the other side. V-shaped bobby pins tend to come in various weights. I prefer to use the heavyweight pins designed for dancers. To hold the hair in place over the hair rat, insert some standard bobby pins in strategic places. And then, to hold all of that in place, use a bum net. I don't like to put pins in over the bun net as sometimes that can cause the net to rip. Finally, use a fine comb to smooth back the rest of the hair and add more bobby pins if you need to. You can also add hairspray to finish it off. And now, let's try on some hats comparing hair up and hair down. Here I am wearing my Autumn Aura design, which is based on an original vintage hat. I think the cascading curls that frame my face complement the elegant velvet leaves. However, with my hair up, I think it makes me look a little bit like Julius Caesar. This is my Drape Delight model, which is a callow half hat shape. I can't decide if I like this shape with my hair down or with my hair up in a bun. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below which one you like best. You might remember this hat from my Vintage Vampire Goth video. This is known as a cask hat. I like to think of this shape as identifiable if it invades your face. I actually think this hat works okay with the hair down, but it would look better with looser curls which are lower than the ones I currently have. When my hair is loose and curled, I think the best hat shape is a halo. Here I am wearing my Vando blush model. Once again, I think the curls complement the fluffy flower. However, with the hair up, it looks a lot more formal and still very, very lovely. Here's another comparison. This is my bright and beautiful hat, which is also a halo shape. I prefer this one with a bun. I think the felt bow makes this hat structural and therefore it works well with a slick and structured bun hairstyle. Ah, now this one is my favorite. This hat is inspired by a vintage hat and is also a halo hat shape. It definitely works better with the curls. With the hair up in a bun, I look like Anne Boleyn. But how about a proper fitted hat such as a turban? Here I am wearing my Turbantastic Pin Tuck Turban. I find this one to be a bit hit and miss when my hair is down and I actually prefer to wear my turbans completely covering my whole hair, including hiding the bun. And lastly, a classic, the pillbox. This is my boucle business model, which is rather petite and sits on top of the head. As the circumference of it is smaller than my head size by quite a while, I think it looks better with the hair down to give it some framing. However, when I try on my Bumper Berry model, which has an overall circumference larger than my head size, I think it looks better with the hair up in a bun. And that's everything about how I do my hair. I hope you've learned something new today. If you've enjoyed my video, please consider subscribing. This really helps me grow and reach a larger audience. For more millinery content, you can follow me on Instagram at Bialona Millinery. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Bye. My name is Ilona, I'm a milliner based in London and I didn't turn off the clock and I know that it's going to TikTok. <laughs> no, the clock doesn't work. <laughs> it's a really bad clock. I have stopped time. <laughs>